All right, well, this is a video that I didn't really intend to make ever, but it's come to it because this little Pi Zero W uh, actually powers a lot of my stuff. It looks after my battery array, uh, my solar controller. It turns different pumps on and off. It sends me email alerts and somehow overnight it's dead. Um, I was getting power out through the GPIO, so there's still the circuitry is getting power, but there's no activity light. So I thought it was the SD card, so I replaced it with a different one, still nothing. So unfortunately, this has got to go in the bin. If you've got any idea of what it could be, let me know. I might try some of the debug headers at some point, but for now I've got to replace it. And so I'm going to do that as a short, sweet video, something nice and simple that apparently you'll absolutely love. So let me know whether you do or don't. Um, but first of all, because this video is not using my new camera, it's not using my good audio, it's a little bit rougher with some crappy hydro light above me. I'm going to be doing a giveaway at the end. I have two MCUs here. Now, at the end of this video, I'll tell you what model they are, and you comment below with what model you want and what you would use it for. And the use case that I like the most, I will message you and send it to you. Make sure you've got your messaging turned on on YouTube uh, so that I can contact you, or yeah, that's pretty much the only option. Make sure that I can message you on YouTube, because if I try and I can't, I'll give up and move on to someone else. But give away at the end. No postage, free. So, moving on. All it really is, is just Linux running on an SD card and a little controller, so I can turn a whole pile of GPOs on and off. And I do use the OTG port to talk to the solar controller. I thought, what better thing to use than a Pine64 Rock64? So this is actually a single board computer, an SBC, much like the Raspberry Pi 3 or 4. I don't know how comparable they are as far as performance and specs go, but you can see it looks pretty much the same. It's got the chip, the RAM and MMC slot. You've got a spot for a real-time clock battery if need be, whole pile of GPIO headers, full-size HDMI, which is awesome. Unfortunately, I'm so annoyed that it is a barrel jack for the power, but we can work around that. We've then got LAN, USB 2 and USB 3, which is kind of excellent. On the bottom, you can see I've got the 2 gig model and we have an SD card slot. So getting started with this should be pretty easy. It's not going to take very long. I do also have a case for it, apparently. I don't recall buying this, but I have it here. Oh, that's a big one, but that'll do. I'll stick it in that once I'm done. So let's get started, get this SD card flashed up, and we'll do that across on the computer. So as you can see here from the specs, it is a quad-core ARM A5364 bit with two gig of RAM in this case. It's powerful enough to do 4K 60 FPS, which is exactly what I need. Now, to get going, if you go across the wiki, there's a link to software releases, you can click that, and you can see there is quite a few variations that you can download. For me, I see Debian and I just default straight to that. So we jump over to the Debian 12 concatenable images. Depends on how you want to flush it, but from here, you essentially want to download the ROC64 image there, so RK3328 chip, and then the partition. This you can actually run on something like a ROC3 as well. So I will be using this in the future. Uh, this has a very similar process. It doesn't say what it is exactly, and I don't recall, but it's an A55 based processor, and these are a great device as well. But we're using the ROC64 because we love Pine64. So download those two GZs, and if you have a look at concatenable images, it does tell you that on Windows or Linux, you just extract them and join them together. So let's do that. We'll grab these two images that we've downloaded, go into 7-zip, extract them here. We'll then run CMD and go into download rock64 and go cat firmware.image petition. Actually, we have to use the plus symbol because it's Windows and we're going to output that to full dot image. Copy. Again, I'm stuck in Linux land. It's copy, not cat. I mean, you can, it's got, they use Zcat actually, because you can do it while they're still uh, compressed, but Windows, less flexible. Now we have that one complete image file, full dot image, which is the size of two of them combined. Next up, going to get my little SD card. I've got an SD card reader. And I'll stick this in the side of the laptop. I have the worst fumble fingers today apparently as well. And there we go. So now that's popped up. And you can see I have flashed it with some other stuff, but we don't really care because we'll go ahead, launch Belina Etcher, which is probably the simplest and easiest way to do most things. Grab that full image, select that 32 gig SD card and let that flash. Whilst that flashes, I will remind you I'm in Australia, which means Five o'clock and I'm gonna have a beer. Holy hell is that already flash. Nope, 
Nearly. I did the bootloader. Cheers, folks. So Friday here. I hope you have a wonderful weekend ahead of you. I'm not done yet, though. I'm going to flash this and try it out. And uh, then I'm just going to dump Python on it and copy my code back across. There we go. Now, I'm going to see if I can just copy some files onto this bit of FAT32 petition. I've got some Python files. I could just SSH them across afterwards, but I'd rather copy them if possible. So we have 30 meg. That's plenty. If I go back to here, go to code. I was going to put on a Pico, but that's not going to happen. And I want these two. As you can tell, I've got an EPEVA solar controller. So I'll copy those there just so I can get to them later. Eject that. Don't format it. Pull it out and we go back to the board now. This is where it gets a little bit interesting and fun. So putting the SD card in is simple enough. It's like any old SD card. Now powering it, I don't actually have a barrel jack that would fit that. So what I did is I got this busted USB cable and just made up a little header. What I'm going to be using is pins 2 and 6. So you've got ground, ground, 5 volt. Which means if we plug it in in a daddly direction, that should give us the 5 volts that we need. Now, depending on what voltage source you've got, it'll draw a different amount of current. But I can plug this into my pine power and we can even see what it's drawing. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to grab my HDMI cable from here. Now, a bit of a wobble because it's plugged into the screen that was recording. And I'm going to plug it in to this so we can see the output. Now, in theory, if I give this some power, we should get some LEDs and then I should get a display on the screen in front of me. There we go. We have two LEDs, three LEDs there, which is looking very good. I can't see what you're seeing now, but it looks like something's going on. So I'm just going to give it a minute and see what comes up on the screen. And there we go. That's exactly what we want. So nice and quick and easily, it's booted. I can plug in a keyboard and get started. I'm gonna set the language, join my Wi-Fi, uh, set a password and copy these two Python files to the main file system so I can start using it again. That's it, that's all it takes folks now. Back to what you want handheld. This is an Arduino Pro Mini called the Simple. Pretty certain these are knockoffs, but it's got an Atmega 328P and they're a little bit short in supply at the moment. This is another of the same, except it's an Arduino Nano uh, with a 328P. So a slightly different form factor. This one has your micro USB port or mini USB port on it. This has no USB port on it. So slightly different use cases, but both awesome little devices that I like to do a fair bit with. So leave a comment below, make sure I can contact you via YouTube let me know what you want to do with one of these. I'll give it a week from publication, and then I'm going to pick a comment, I'm going to announce the winner, and I'll post these out. Hope you enjoyed. I hope that gives you a bit of understanding of the Rock 64. They're about 40 bucks US, plus about 12 bucks postage, so nice and cheap. Case was only a couple of bucks. I'm going to go slap that in now and get my garden going again. I'll see you guys next time. Whilst you're at it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and all those little things that YouTube wants you to do. Cheers, folks.